Welcome to the Wave Strength. Innovative solutions for a secure retirement. Presented by Pacific Life. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another exciting episode of the Wave Strength podcast series. I'm your host, Jim Breen, with Pacific Life's Institutional Division. With us in studio today is Destiny Lara and Mary Beth Glotzbach. Thank you both for being with us today and then coming out. And I know uh, coming uh, a bit of a journey for, for, for you, Mary Beth. So thanks for coming out. My pleasure. Um, and uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, your respective firm. So uh, uh, Destiny Lara, you're with Pacific Life uh, and you're the AVP of Financial Education and Participant Experience with Pacific Life. So thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. And, and Mary Beth, uh, you are the uh, VP for Institutional Defined Contribution uh, at uh, Franklin Templeton. So thank you again for joining us. Yeah, it's a pleasure to be here. And uh, uh, let's jump right into it here. So, you know, um, we wanted to be talking today about uh, the participant uh, experience, the journey that that participant goes on, and focusing on um, the, the participant through that entire journey, not just that one focus or that, that one conversation or one experience you may provide for that, that participant in their retirement journey. And, you know, we have two firms here, Pacific Life. Franklin Templeton, uh, so much history and so much strength and stability from both I institutions. Let's talk a little bit about maybe from a, a philosoph philosophical standpoint, why uh, focusing on uh, the, the participant is, is so experienced. Mary Beth, can you lead the discussion? Sh sure, happy to. Um, I would say, you know, at Franklin Templeton, the participant is the center of all that we do. Um, we have a, you know, kind of an ongoing philosophy that we want to improve the outcomes for retirement plan participants. But I think we know if we create the coolest new investment or the best new feature, if a participant doesn't understand it, if it doesn't, you know, relate to their circumstances, it's never going to be used. And so, you know, that is where all of the solutions that we're focused on are really around thinking about where the participant is along their retirement journey and recognizing that at different points in time, they're going to have different needs, different goals, different priorities. And how can we take in that, that information and, and, and provide a more personalized solution that will really, um, you know, address their household context. Yeah, personalized solution. Uh, that's great to hear. Uh, Destiny, perhaps you can share a little bit about um, your thoughts on, uh, you know, the need for a deeper focus on the participant. At Pacific Life, the customer is also a focus for us. The, the customer is part of our core values. And so when we think about it from a defined contribution lifetime income standpoint, um, in the institutional division, we recognize that our participants really span all different generations. And as Mary Beth mentioned, it's about meeting them where they're at, and that's something that we take into consideration when we're, we're thinking through the experience for those individuals. It's not one size fits all. They're at different points in their journey. Um, but from saving to retirement to being near retirement and thinking about having to create income for yourself. Yeah, and, and that journey, you know, I, I know we're using that word a lot now in, in this conversation, but it, it is so important. And you know, we recently did a, uh, a webinar uh, between uh, Franklin Templeton and Pacific Life. And in that webinar, we had some person on the street videos where um, we, we were able to film some folks uh, both on the West Coast and in the Midwest. And you really, you, you truly see uh, similarities between where folks are in their journey but they are all unique. Each of those individuals, they have their own story to tell, and each of them are at a different point in their retirement journey, be it just joining the workforce uh, or nearing the end of their, their, their work life. Um, and it's, you know, uh, hopefully that webinar helped serve as a wake-up call for many that, that we really do need in the industry to, to focus on that journey, that entire journey, um, and in a holistic way. I uh, completely agree. You know, again, it's, you know, maybe the philosophy or approach at Franklin, but we feel like all U.S. workers, you know, should have access to a personalized and holistic advice along all points of their journey. And recognizing, too, you know, it's some of those, you know, the, the people on the street um, series showed, you know, people who are younger, often they've got really short-term goals. Maybe it's paying off student debt or buying a house. But then somebody who's approaching retirement, they're thinking about how do I support my spending needs in retirement? How will my longevity, you know, impact my ability to spend throughout my lifetime? Or maybe I'm thinking about a bequest. And so all along the, the spectrum, we have to think about where they are and meeting them with solutions that align with their situation. And I think that that's where, you know, 
focusing on you know retirement income solutions, um, it, it's it's a complex discussion. And so, how can we simplify that and bring them the information that they need to make an informed decision? Yeah, absolutely. And you know, we talk about bringing them the information that they need. I think, you know, at Pacific Life, one thing we're really trying to do is is uh, create a, a platform or a, a library of, of thought leadership material where we can meet people. And, and I know, Destiny, you have um, a lot of experience with that and a lot of um, uh, great ideas uh, in, in that regard. We talk about that often, but perhaps you can share some of your, your ideas and thoughts on that subject. Yeah, I think one of the key things is to raise awareness about the expectation of the American worker to create lifetime income for themselves at the end of retirement. And, and that not being a message that gets delivered right before retirement, but it's something they start thinking about as they start saving for retirement. Because your biggest expense in your lifetime is, is retirement. So you think about saving for a house or saving for college education. But you also, you can't forget about retirement, even though it is so far down the road, because you have to save so much more money for that um, than those other expenses. And um, that always needs to be one of the priorities that you're saving for. So in terms of meeting them where they're at and helping them get through these other financial decisions that they have along their journey, that is very important because they're trying to balance a lot of savings um, aspects at, at one time. But we also don't want them to lose sight of that end goal of, of retirement. And that that's just as important to continue to save. And, oh, by the way, if you start really early, you don't have to put a lot down and a lot into that fund at, at that time. It really works for itself. And then also, again, just to having that, that continuous message of this is your the expectation of you to fund your retirement. It should be just as important as saving for any of those other aspects. Um, as well as it, you know, some, some people are, are grappling with managing debt. Um, so that's another situation that comes into play and in being able to provide content um, and guidance to help them through these financial situations that they come across so that we can talk to them about retirement. Otherwise, it, it falls on deaf ears. Uh, you go ahead, please. No, I, the only thing I was going to say, too, is, you know, it takes a village, right? Like it takes all of the constituents, right, in the DC eco ecosystem to really think about playing an important role, whether it's the plan sponsor, the record keeper, asset managers, advice providers. Participants really need kind of help from multiple different sources, and we have to think about that in a more holistic way as a, as a as a DC community. Yeah, and you know we we did a, a recent poll where we we asked uh, respondents, you know. What's something that you fear when you hear the word retirement? And, and I know um, we've had conversations with other folks from Franklin Templeton, and they say, well, we, we don't want to use the word, you know, people don't want to hear the word retirement anymore. We don't want to use the re word retirement anymore. But in, in, in this particular survey, you know, we, we said, what was, what's a word? What's something that, you know, maybe is a little frightening for you? Um, and one of the, the big responses we, re we received was debt you know, worrying about debt. And you talk about debt, I mean, various stages of debt, whether it's, you know, coming into the workforce and having those student loans, or perhaps you're now a little bit further in your retirement journey and you've purchased a house and now you have to worry about the home. Or Destiny, as you mentioned, you know, retirement in general. I mean, that's that's the most uh, expensive thing that, that somebody um, will, will, will save for or, or can be or should be. Um, and it's, it's interesting that with that education, right, I mean, if we can provide more education, even if there is that fear, um, you know, it perhaps provides a little courage to get through that fear so that, you know, it's okay to deal with those, those difficult things. But if you have the education, you, you have maybe the resources to encourage to, 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 to move through and to prepare. Completely agree. And sometimes it's the education at, at the right moment. Um, Warren Cormier at DCA, he, he runs the Retirement Research Center, you know, he talks in some of his research about you don't need to know how to change a tire until you actually have a flat tire. And so it's, it's the same circumstance here. You know, can we use data about participants, whether it's, you know, um, milestone events, a marriage, a birth of a child, maybe it's birthdays, as a way to reach out to participants and encourage them to act, give them that nudge, you know, right at that time when they really should be thinking about retirement or updating their beneficiaries or savings for their college, um, their 
children's education for college. And it's how can we think about where they are in their life, the data that helps us determine the right message at the right time to yeah. the right participant. Yeah. Well, well, Destiny, I know you, you mentioned a moment ago, Mary Beth, learning to change a tire, or, you know, people having to learn a, a, a tool, a, a technique or some sort of uh, quick trade, uh, and you maybe even using social media to do so. Um, but, you know, we've talked a great deal about this, uh, Destiny, and I know Mary Beth, we've actually talked about this as well, but, you know, a lot of the resources that have, you know, um, when, when I was a kid, I, I remember my dad, uh, who is a, a, a very talented woodworker, and it's just something he learned through the years, but he started with Time Life books, the, and you would subscribe, whether it was plumbing or elect, electrical work or uh, uh, um, woodworking, and he would get those books, and he would just learn and read the books, and he'd try build a an, an ottoman or he'd build a bookshelf or something like that, and now he's just, he, the things that he can do, it's amazing, right? And anymore, that's not what these new generations are looking towards. They're they're on TikTok, right? They're on Instagram, um, Reddit, or whatever they are doing to to learn about new ways of, of doing things. Um, and we've had these conversations even about TikTok and and now TikTok with their TikTok taught me, right? Uh, you know, what, what's your thought about looking at those um, uh, those existing tools as perhaps new modes of communication as it pertains to uh, financial literacy? Well, they certainly play a role because it, you know, the fact is that in the workforce, there's basically four generations right now, and they like to receive information differently. They like to learn about things differently. And to, if we're going to meet each one where they're at, we have, we have to use the platform that they're, they're using in order to reach them and, um, and really learn about them. That's something that we do at Pacific Life is to dive deeply into getting an understanding of our participants um, that we are trying to reach so that we can formulate the message that will resonate with them and, and send it out on a platform where they're going to receive it. Yeah, and I mean, it's, it's, I'm glad you're talking about that because when I post financial literacy information on my MySpace page, nobody seems to engage with that. I don't know what's going on. No, I'm all, <laughs> MySpace, yeah. Um, but uh, that, that is so important. I mean, we, we, have to be, we have to be flexible. We have to look at w how these new generations of, 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 of investors, of, of people moving into the workforce are absorbing information. Um, and, you know, let's talk about the the uh, you know the digital age in, as it pertains to the participant journey, um, Mary Beth, you know what are what are your thoughts? Let's maybe we could start with data. What are your thoughts on 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 um, perhaps uh, predictive analytics or just data in general? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I honestly I think that you know data in, in some ways it's it's am amazing to me you know how technology has changed our lives right big and small ways, and the exponential access to data and to information to opinion pieces. Um, is sometimes overwhelming. And it's all of the, uh, the firms that we use on a day-to-day -day basis, Amazon and Netflix, right? They're using the data for segmentation and predictive analytics, you know, giving us recommendations based on our past decisions and some of our preferences. And it feels like the DC industry is stuck in the analog age, right? Where they're not harnessing the data or the technology, you know, to make more personalized decisions. But we really do have access to so much data. And we can get a more robust data set. We can, you know, think about making inferences and presenting information to participants in small digestible bites that they can make a decision, that they can, you know, let us know what their preferences are so that we can build solutions that address those specific needs, their specific context. And I think that, you know, um, we, we'd like to say it at Franklin, uh, my colleagues and I, that we, we talked about ourselves as data geeks, right? And that you really have got to have the data. And there's so much, there's more than just age, right? And helping participants come up with better outcomes. And so I think we in the, the DC industry just have to be more aggressive, more thoughtful. Um, it's, it's ripe for disruption in terms of how we can deliver better outcomes to participants. Yeah, and, and that data. I mean, um, our institutional division. We've we've gone to great lengths to really follow the data, especially even in our uh, general marketing communications that we, we put out um, uh, to our, our various channels. And I, I you know. Working with my team, I tell them, I say, you know, we ha sometimes we have to have a, a tough conversation uh, as a, with the data, not each other, but when we're looking at the reports and the data, 
you know, we have to follow that data because that, the, 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 the more we um, can accept what the data is telling us and the more we can course correct um, and, and, you know, be agile in the way that we course correct and do so compassionately, right? Because if we've learned anything, we know that we need to create content and uh, communications that resonate and connect with those participants. And we, we need to do so in, 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 a, in a way that is going to have a lasting effect. And I think, Destiny, you and I have talked about that in the past, about creating, uh, following the data, you know, the, the newsletter uh, that, that we re, re, we've uh, produced with, uh, with Dr. Chi Sun, for example. Uh, I uh, highly recommend anybody on, on the uh, uh, podcast or watching right now to head over to our Institutional Division Showcase page on LinkedIn, and you can also follow the, the newsletter I'm talking about. But please uh, share your thoughts on that, Destiny. It, yeah, because I think where you're going is that the data is going to tell you when, when you also need to change. So um, because things change at a rapid pace in just in our daily lives. And so while you think you may have you may be connecting and resonating with this group of participants at any given time, that can change tomorrow. And so you have to constantly be looking at your data to see do do how can what can I learn from that? And, and what do we need to change to continue to, to connect with them? And the other thing I was going to say was that uh, I completely agree with Mary Beth and on the topic of personalization and um, how important that is because uh, everyone has access to a search engine and they can search these financial um, education topics, but you get just this vast amount of information. So being able to use that data to, um, to personalize it and, and really pare it down to make it um, applicable to that person's situation um, and put it right out there exactly what they need in front of them, it just makes it so much easier. And that, that goes back to that experience and, um, and really builds a lot of trust with it with Pacific Life or Franklin Templeton, whoever is providing that information in, in that fashion. What about, you know, telling the story? You know, we talk a lot about, um, and, and I think this kind of connects with personalization a little bit, but we, we, we talk a lot about, you know, I think in our industry, here is the, here's the product and here is everything under the sun. Here's everything from what the product will provide all the way to, you know, the necessary disclosures and the legal and, and, you know, we, we kind of present that then to the customer or client and expect them to distill all of that. And they go maybe to their financial advisor and say, well, I, I know about, you know, Pacific Life or Franklin Templeton. They're great, great firms. You know, I want to utilize X product, but can you explain it to me? But, you know, how can we use this, a story, to maybe t storytelling devices to, to, to connect with those participants so that we're not having to front load all of that information in the beginning? Yeah, no, I, I think that, that you're absolutely right. I think about, you know, we in our daily lives are so focused on participants, the experience, where they are in their retirement journey. How can we um, connect with them? How can we provide the right solution? And it's really complex, mm -hmm. you know? So while I would say throughout the retirement journey, we have to think about connecting with all of those participants so that they can get to an appropriate retirement. But I think about those who are approaching retirement and that's where the stakes are really high, right? They don't have time to make up for, you know, subpar savings rates or market shifts that negatively impact their their savings. And so I think that um, to the extent that we're asking them to make really big decisions is overwhelming. I think it's overwhelming for me, and I live and breathe this every day. So how do we then narrow that down into more bite-sized pieces of information? How do we simplify it and give participants the confidence to act, to take action? And what I love about the stories is you can even give stories about you know, retirement situations. People who are approaching retirement might be like this. And then you can compare that to your own personal situation. And it gets you thinking about all of those really big, really complex decisions that you've got to make. So in addition to, you know, asset allocation or your savings rate, it's like, what's my withdrawal strategy? What's my, you know, social security claiming? When am I going to, what's my tax location? There's so much to consider. And so we've been thinking about, you know, uh, partnering with fintech firms, right? This is not something that we always have the expertise in, but how can we take the data, have a more robust data set, provide personalized information, and ask participants just to make 
individual distinct decisions? How can we just narrow it down into something that seems less overwhelming than all of those decisions that you outlined? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And what are your thoughts on that, Destiny? Yeah, I think when it comes to storytelling, it, um, individuals are looking for someone to relate to. And if they see a story about somebody who is making a decision that they're also grappling with, they'd link it back to themselves and say, hey, that's just like me. It's exactly what I'm going through right now. And their ears perk up and they listen and they pay attention to see how they worked through it and they can learn from that. Excellent. Yeah, a lot of great conversation opportunities even beyond what we've discussed here, but um, maybe we could save those for, for another episode if you're both willing to come back. Absolutely. Great. Yes, great. That'd be great. I'm wonderful. Destiny and Mary Beth, uh, I want to just thank you so much for uh, the both of you taking time out of your busy days to, to come and join us here in the studio. Um, and uh, it's been a great conversation. Uh, and to our audience, I, I want to take the opportunity to thank you for joining us today on another episode of, of The Wave Strength. I want to encourage you to head over to Spotify, to YouTube, to Audible, and search The Wave Strength for more content. And don't forget to like and subscribe so that you can stay current with new content that we're continuously posting. Thanks so much and have a great day, everyone. This has been another episode of The Wave Strength presented by Pacific Life. Don't forget to catch us on YouTube and make sure to subscribe. Although this podcast is presented by Pacific Life, the opinions and views expressed are those of the hosts and participants and do not necessarily reflect Pacific Life's views on any of the topics discussed. Pacific Life is a product provider. It is not a fiduciary and therefore does not give advice or make recommendations regarding insurance or investment products. Pacific Life, its affiliates, its distributors, and respective representatives do not provide any employer-sponsored qualified plan administrative services or impartial advice about investments and do not act in a fiduciary capacity for any plan. Pacific Life refers to Pacific Life Insurance Company and its affiliates, including Pacific Life and Annuity Company. Insurance products can be issued in all states except New York by Pacific Life Insurance Company or Pacific Life and Annuity Company. In New York, insurance products are only issued by Pacific Life and Annuity Company. Product availability and features may vary by state. Each insurance company is solely responsible for the financial obligations accruing under the products it issues. This information has been provided for informational purposes only and should not be construed as investment advice or a recommendation. The product discussed is proposed and subject to change. All investments involve risk. There is no assurance that the employment of this strategy will result in future targets being met. Prospective investors should consult a financial professional in order to determine whether an investment product is appropriate for their particular circumstances. Franklin Templeton and Pacific Life are unaffiliated companies. This podcast was recorded on October 17th, 2022. Thanks for joining us on today's show. We'd love to hear from you. Join the conversation below and leave a comment on your thoughts on what the industry can do better for participants as it pertains to lifetime income solutions. And if you'd like more interesting content, click one of these links over here.